The world of crypto gaming is all hyped up about play to airdrop campaigns and ridiculous play to earn mechanics, but I'm not just looking for something that's going to get people in the door. I want something that's going to consistently keep players coming back with sustainable long-term incentive systems, and Cornucopias just proved that they're going to do exactly that. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Late Game Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. Cornucopius has done a phenomenal job at developing conceptual frameworks that consider the interests of crypto enthusiasts and the motivations of gamers. Cornucopius is continuing with that trend with the release of the Land Utility deck, which outlines some of the parameters of different incentive structures and a lot of the benefits to owning land in the Cornucopius universe. And if you thought this document was just an outline of some of the different incentives, maybe gives you some insights on the player progression systems, I want you to stick around to the end of this video because I think that this document changes a ton of perceptions about how you might prepare for entering the Cornucopius universe right now. The XP multiplier system is seriously the most brilliant thing that I've seen in Web3 Gaming so far. This is the kind of thing that only an experienced gamer and a crypto enthusiast would have come up with. Here's how it works. Every individual land plot has a level associated with it, and it starts at zero and it resets every season, which is about 13 weeks. But it has a max level of 100, which is the goal of what you want to reach by the end of the season. Gamers that are accumulating XP in the Cornucopius universe, they get bonus XP for working on land that has a lower level. And there's higher bonuses that are associated with lands that are higher rarities. There's kind of too much information here to read it all out loud, so I'm just going to show you the, the chart on the screen here so that you can see the bonuses yourself and sort of match up, you know, what land levels that you might have with what rarities. The understanding of this chart might not make a lot of sense to you if you're not a gamer, but gamers are always looking for the fastest, most efficient ways to get an edge in the game. And oftentimes that includes figuring out the fastest way to accumulate in-game currencies, in-game resources, and yes, XP. In this particular case, gamers are incentivized to work on lower level land, which in, at first sounds kind of counterintuitive, but if you think about it, it does pretty effectively uh, eliminate or at least mitigate things that gamers hate to see, like pay to win mechanics or broken player progression systems that make it impossible for new players to come in and actually legitimately compete. Nobody will be able to enter Cornucopius and claim that it wasn't a fair competition because the early adopters just got in early and now there's just no way to catch up. With this system, new landowners have something of value to offer gamers that more established landowners don't have. Now, this XP progression system also has an interesting contrast with the way that seasonal rewards are framed. If the goal each season is to level up your land to level 100, but the, the uh, XP multipliers that are offered to players that are working that land is a diminishing return, it creates a need for landowners to try to produce creative ways to incentivize people to keep working their land up to level 100. Every individual season, there will be an objective amount of rewards that landowners can claim at the end of the season, but they have to earn it. 
By the end of any given season, if a landowner is only able to level up their land to, say, level 50 out of 100, then that landowner will only get to claim 50% of the rewards that are allocated for their land. In theory, it may be possible for an individual landowner to actually level up their land all on their own to level 100 by the end of every season. But uh, I'm, I'm also inclined to think that that is much easier said than done. I've said it before, Cornucopius is going to be a highly collaborative game. So the people that have a team of collaborators that they're going to work with, those are going to be the gamers that come out on top. The craziest part is that it sounds like this system may be coming out a heck of a lot sooner than any of us would have expected because preseason one is starting Q4 of 2024. Now, to be totally fair, it sounds like this might be more of a testing phase to test the rewards distribution mechanism for land assets uh, because during both preseason one and two, uh, you're not you're not going to have to level up your land in order to earn the full impact of those rewards. I'm actually not even sure if at that time the, that mechanism is even going to be live. But it sounds like preseason three and four, at least according to the expressed expectation at this point in time, will have the ability to implement the gameplay portion of this reward system. At that point in time which presumably would be about Q2 of 2025, we could be moving into the public beta phase of the Cornucopius universe, which if you want my opinion, that is probably the biggest bit of news that is revealed from this document. This project is moving so fast, and it feels like the access to the vast in-game universe of Cornucopius is so imminent in the foreseeable future. So if you want to get as involved as you possibly can be, this week is the last week that you can get access to the file node NFTs. The next opportunity to mint one of these file node NFTs might not occur for quite some time. So if you want to get one before it's too late, you can use my affiliate link down in the description below to mint one again at the discounted rate that they're currently selling at now and you can help support this channel in the process. When you take in this information, reading through the land utility deck, you might just see an XP progression system and a rewards framework, just some basic information about how this whole thing is gonna work. But this document is helping to shape a lot of my perceptions of how this gameplay framework is gonna work and what we can expect when this game goes live. So to finish out this video, I'm going to give you a few of the different ways that this either changes my expectations of how I thought the game was going to be, or it's shaping my perceptions of what this game could look like when it goes live. The first thing is that the specific land location that you're able to acquire is going to be slightly less important than I thought that it was. If I'm a gamer, well, I am a gamer, but let's say that I'm a player that is looking to smelt my ore into metal. Land plot A is a legendary land plot, and it's the closest land plot to the mine that I'm coming out of to, to try to smelt my ore into metal. Uh, but it's already level 80 because all of the other players that come out of that mine, they automatically go to that land plot because it's the closest. Land plot B might only be a rare land plot, and it's a little bit further away than the land plot A, but it's only level 10. If I'm somebody that is trying to level up faster, then I might be more inclined to take a little bit longer of a walk to go to land plot B because I'm getting bonuses that are worth the extra time. Now, let's keep in mind that I said that it was going to be slightly less important, not that it was going to be completely irrelevant when it comes to location. Uh, the introduction of these different mechanisms that are displayed in the land utility deck I think creates more complex reasons for people to make decisions from, and that's why it makes location slightly less important. 
The second thing that this land utility deck changes for me is the idea that hotels might not be the best business to run in the Cornucopius universe. In my last Cornucopius video, I ended it by saying that I think that hotels are gonna be the best business to run in the Cornucopius universe, even though everyone and their mother is gonna be wanting to run a hotel in the Cornucopius universe. Now that I have read the land utility deck, I think that hotels are gonna be a bad business to run for some people that will actually lose money. What this land utility deck shows us is that the goal for landowners is to maximize development activity on your land so that you can level up your land up to level 100. The way that you maximize that activity is encouraging people to do things on your land that constantly generates XP. I'm talking about things like farming and crafting activities. But you know what isn't gonna generate that XP constantly? one transaction per season to rent out a tenant key. So for people that own small sized land plots, no matter what the rarity, I don't think that a hotel is gonna be a viable business for you. Don't get me wrong, you could try, but you also risk losing out on seasonal rewards by giving up a pretty large portion of your real estate that could be used for XP generating activities. And if you can't generate XP on your land, then your influence spear is gonna be garbage and your, your land is gonna be a danger zone so people aren't going to rent out rooms in your hotel anyways. People that own larger plots of land could probably more reasonably run a hotel on their land. But even then, I do think that you're risking giving up a ton of space that could be used to maximize XP generating events. All of those reasons that I gave that drive the demand for why I think hotels would be a good business in Cornucopius, that's all still true. The demand is still completely gonna be there, but I think the supply is, is gonna be a different story here because of the information that we got out of this land deck. The third realization that I got out of this land deck is that guild assets just got way more valuable. If you don't realize just how impactful the, the information in this deck is specifically to guild assets, well, specifically ones that represent land assets in the Cornucopius universe, let me enlighten you. You could, in theory, buy your own land, and you could try to level it up every single season to level 100 so that maybe you might end up with 100% of the seasonal rewards allocated for your land. I don't think that that is an impossible task by any means, but it would be a lot of work. You'll have to spend multiple hours every single day throughout an entire season in order to try to get it there, especially if you're running solo. Guild-owned land, because they've got large player bases already, they're gonna have a lot of help leveling their land to level 100, which means that they're probably regularly gonna be earning a pretty large portion of the seasonal rewards that are allocated to them. Plus, there's all of the revenue that they're gonna generate from the businesses that they run on those lands crafting things and then selling them to marketplaces, generating revenue from that. And also, I would be surprised if the major guilds are not regularly gonna be contenders in district competitions that are gonna have their own separate reward pool that's allocated to those. A substantial portion of all of those rewards are gonna go right back passively to owners of those guild-owned assets. Now, I fully expect that uh, plenty of those guild asset owners will want to regularly participate in game to help level those lands up to level 100 because they benefit from it. But also, it's not a requirement for owning a, a guild-owned asset. So really, it's a lot less work than just buying your own individual Cornucopius land NFT.
At the time of recording this video, I heard that the number of guilds in the Cornucopius community has grown to something like 10 to 12 different guilds. But the only two guilds that I'm aware of that have these guild-owned assets available on the open marketplace is the Corn Mafia and the Knights Guild of Cornucopius. Both of these guilds have assets that represent the value that I just described, and I'll put them on screen so that you can go and find them on JPEG store where they will be purchasable. I don't know about you guys, but this document got me unbelievably pumped about the foreseeable future of the Cornucopius universe. It feels like this game is closer than ever, with information like this coming out and the last few episodes of Kopi Cafe being so unbelievably exciting. Quick shout out to Tobias, Catherine, and Jillian, who made these past few episodes of Kopi Cafe some of the most exciting episodes that we've had in a long time. The community cannot get enough of those gameplay images that these people brought to the table. Anyways, I'd love to hear what you took from this document, or what has changed about your perception of the future of the cornucopious economy. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below, or just throw some corn emojis down there, because engagement is, is good. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.